Thank you, Jesus. Are you glad to be here this morning? Now, I know if you look around, it looks pretty sparse, right? But I want you to open your spiritual eyes for a moment. I want you to open your eyes and I want you to really see in the spirit that this place is wall to wall with an angelic host. They are here to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords with us. They are here to say glory to the highest. They are here to exalt his name with us. We are in heavenly places with the King of Kings, with the Lord of Lords. And when we stand in his presence, there is no weapon, say no weapon. No weapon. That can be formed against us. That will prosper. <laughs> Aren't you glad? Joy, I 
your weapons are. You got to know where to get your weapons. They don't come with our natural hands. They come from the Spirit of God. When we stand in Him, when we stand fully clothed with the armor of God, from our head down to our feet, that's how we fight our battles. I want you to close your eyes just a moment. And I want you to think of the battle that you're engaged in right now. I want you to think of the mountain that is standing in your way. I want you to think of the obstacle, the hindrance that is standing in your way of attaining the goal or of reaching the answer or walking into the fulfillment and the fruition of the prophetic word. Get a visual of that right now. If it's yourself, visualize that. Because this is how we fight our battles. Mm. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. Come on. This is how we fight our battles. Fully clothed. This is how we fight our battles. With the sword in our hand. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. It may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. Look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. 
This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our This is how I fight. This is how I fight. about those that love him, that worship him, that spend time in his presence, those that call upon his name. He said, I will hear, I will answer, I will come to your rescue. I won't leave you where you're at, but I will come unto you and I will pull you out of that situation. If you call upon me, if you call upon me, if you surround yourself with me, if you surround yourself in my presence, you surround yourself with my word because my word will not, will not, will not return void. It will hit its mark. It may look like I'm surrounded. It may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded. It may look like, it may look like I'm surrounded. Like, 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 
This is how I fight my battle. Woo! Come on! Give me praise! Give me praise! It may look like you're surrounded. It may look like you'll never defeat your enemy. It may look like you're outnumbered. It may look like you are all by your little lonesome and you are about to be overtaken by your enemy. But I'm here to tell you, God will never leave you nor forsake you, but he will be with you. And when you call upon his name, he said, I will answer, I will be there. And there is no weapon that the enemy can fashion, that can form, that can even create in the pits of hell to bring against you that will prosper. Because when the enemy comes, he doesn't face you. He faces the Spirit of God in you. It's not by might, nor by power, but by His Spirit. His Spirit. We've got to learn where our place is, and it is in Him. Outside of Him, defeat. In Him, victory. Somebody needs to hear that. Outside of Him, defeat but in him victory 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 after victory the battle may be longer but at the end if we remain Larry in him there's victory there's victory look at your friend and say I'm gonna experience victory I'm gonna experience the victory belongs to Jesus This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my battles.
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Come on. Victory. Come on. morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. I don't know about y'all, but I'm just thankful for what God is doing in my life and what he's already done. Amen. Amen. I could just go, I could just go on and praise God for what he's already done in my life. Amen. I don't have to look back very far to see God working in my life. Amen. So I get excited about the word of God. Amen. I know, I know some of y'all like to, you know, keep it quiet and, you know, dignified and all that, sophisticated and all that, but that ain't me. I get loud. I get loud. Because when I think about what God has done, when I think about where God has already brought me from, I get excited in the house of the Lord. If we can't get excited here, we can get excited at the football game or the basketball game. Surely we ought to be able to get excited in the house of the Lord. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So if I get a little loud, it's just, just, that's just the way I do it. Second Kings, let us stand for the reading of God's word this morning. Be found in Second Kings chapter number 20. And we're going to deal with the first seven verses. Again, that's Second Kings chapter number 20. And we're going to deal with the first seven verses. Amen when you got it. But I just want to read the B part of verse number five. Again, that's 2 Kings chapter number 20, verses one through seven. I will, I'll wait, we'll wait on you because I want you all to get this. Because we, we got some power that we hadn't tapped into yet. So I want, us, I want us to get that. So we're going to wait on you. 2 Kings chapter number 20. I still hear a few pages, so we'll wait on you. It's important that we look at the word of God and see the word of God for ourselves. Because, see, you don't, know, you don't know whether I'm telling you the truth or not if you're not looking at the word of God. Amen. Amen. 2 Kings chapter number 20. I just want to read the B part of verse number five, and it says, I have heard your prayer, 
and I have seen your tears. That's enough. For a subject this morning, I'd like to talk about access to heaven. Access to heaven. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for these, your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, but we need to hear a word from heaven this morning, Lord. We ask that you would stir up our spirits, stir up our hearts this morning, Lord. Hide your word in our heart, Lord, that we might not sin against you, Lord. And I pray as the man of God that you would give me that word, Lord, through the power of the Holy Ghost that would destroy yokes in this building this morning. Lord, build up, strengthen today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your glory fall down in this place, Lord. And Lord, we return all praise, all honor, and all glory unto you. And the church said, Amen. Amen. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. Access to heaven. I told him in the first service, when I hear that I have access to heaven, that automatically makes me excited. Because there's power. The, the, God the Father is in heaven. Jesus is in heaven, sitting by at the right hand of the Father. So that's all the power that this little old preacher needs. I just have to learn how to tap in to that power. Amen. We struggle. We go through. We, 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 we go through a whole lot of unnecessary stuff that, that all we have to do is just touch heaven and get that thing taken care of. But I got to know how to tap into heaven. Amen. But I just want to leave you today. I want you to know when you leave here today that you do have access to heaven. Why? Why do I need access to heaven? Because we got some situations going on here on earth that we can't change, that we can't do nothing about. But anything that you may be facing today, we serve a God that's able. Amen. We serve a God that's able. See, I'm a living witness that this God I'm talking about is able. See, I wouldn't get up here and tell you about a God that I don't know for myself. See, I know he's able. I wouldn't be here on this platform this morning if he wasn't able. I'd have been dead sleeping in my grave a long time ago. Amen, somebody. But you got access to heaven. The word access is a means of approaching or entering a place. It's a means of approaching or entering into a place. Amen. Come here, come here Brother Charles, for just a second. Let me show you something. This is my friend, Brother Charles, I can call him. See these keys right here? I'm going to give these keys to Brother Charles. I'm going to hand them to him. Now, Brother Charles, he has access to my car. Not only does he have access to my car, he has access to my house. He got the keys. He's got access. But watch this. He's not there yet. He's not in my car yet. He's not in my house yet. He just has access to it. Amen, somebody. So a lot of times what we do, we come, we come Sunday after Sunday, and we sit, and we have access to heaven, and we never tap into it. We never tap into heaven. We never tap into the power that we have in God. I'm going to help somebody this morning. If I can help two or three of you, I'd be all right. If I don't help nobody, I'm going to help myself. Because I'm, I'm tired of just the regular old church service. The regular old church service won't do it for me no more. I'm tired of coming and leaving the same way. Huh? When I can walk in victory. I want to walk in victory in all areas of my life. Huh? I may be good over here, but I'm not so good over here. But see, I want to walk in victory in all areas of my life. Whatever I got going on, I want to be able to call God. I want to be able to pull, pull it down from heaven and bring it down to earth. That's power in the name of Jesus. That's power in the name of Jesus. 
Am I right about it? Yes. Access to heaven. We have access. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. Beloved, you and I have access to the Father who is in heaven through his Son, Jesus Christ. This is where it gets a little tricky at right here. Because we got to have a relationship with the Son. It's impossible to tap into this power that I'm talking about if you don't have a relationship with the Son. He says, no man comes to the Father except by me. You can't get in there no other way. A lot of times we're just praying. I'm trying to help you, beloved. A lot of times we're just praying and, and, and our prayers are just going up and hitting the ceiling and coming right back down. We can't get through to heaven. Amen. God is waiting to move on our behalf, but you can't get your prayer through. It's because of your relationship with God. You got to have a strong, active, day-to-day -day relationship with Jesus. Can't be lukewarm. Can't do it today. You, you can't put it on Sunday and take it off Monday. It's got to be an active relationship. I got to be so, to tap into this power that I'm talking about, you're going to have to be sold out to God. Meaning he's the number one in my life. Let me tell you something. God will only take first place in your life. He won't take no other place. He's not going to be second. He's not going to be third. He's going to take first place or nothing. Amen, somebody. Amen. Access to heaven. Let me get that first scripture. Acts chapter 10, verses 33 through 35. It says, Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, we all here present before God to hear all the things that are commanded thee of God. 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Watch this. Let's pause right there just for a minute. God shows no partiality. He shows no favoritism. So don't you think, well, they're more spiritual than I am. They're more holy than I am. That's why they're reaching God. No, the same thing he do for somebody else, he'll do for you. See, but see, you can, be, you can be sitting right here and this person on this side can get, be getting blessed and this person over here can be getting blessed and you're not getting blessed. That's because they know how to tap into their God and you don't. Can I just give it to you straight? We got to learn how to tap in to our God. We serve a mighty God. The same power that God used to raise Jesus from the grave, you and I have access to that power. But just because we have access to it doesn't mean we're going to have it. I gave, him, I gave him my keys, but he wasn't there. He was still here. He had to go out, and he had to take possession of the car. He had to take possession of the house. See, we come Sunday after Sunday, but we never take possession. Huh? So we live, we Christians, it's not that we're not saved, but we live defeated lives. Huh? Got a smile on our face and heartache in our heart. Amen, somebody. 35. Say, but... But in every nation, watch this, he that feared him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Amen? Amen. He that feared him and worketh righteousness. Amen. He, he that feareth God, he that has put God in his proper place in my life. Where is God in your life this morning? Can I ask that question? Where's God truly at in your life? 
How many other things or how many other people are more important in your life this morning than God? So you got your job first, your family second, my car third, and I'll slip you in, God, right about fourth. He'll take first place or no place at all. Amen. Amen. Got to be sold out to him. Am I right about it? Let's get that next scripture, John 16 and 23. And in that day, you shall ask, watch this. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, watch this. Whosoever shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Got to come in that name. But I can't come in the name that I don't know. I can't come in the name that I don't have a relationship with. He said, my sheep know my name. Do he know your name? Do you know his name? The only way you're going to know him, you're going to have to have a relationship with him. You're going to have, when you, in order to hear the voice of God, you got to communicate with him on a daily basis. So when he speaks, I hear the voice of God. There's so many voices speaking to us out here in the world today. The TV speaking, the internet speaking, the news speaking, the Facebook speaking, all of this stuff is speaking. How do you hear God's voice in the midst of all that? You got to know it. You got to know it. I can't tell you how the voice sounds. You got to know the voice for yourself. Am I right about it? Amen, somebody. So, so what is it? Watch this. What is it that moves the God of heaven when we pray? What is it that moves it? I don't know about y'all, but I want to know. I want to know what moves God when I pray. Because I, I, when I pray, I want God to move something for me right here on earth. I want God to do something for me right here on earth. I don't want to just pray just to be praying. I don't want to just pray because everybody else praying. When I pray, I want God to do something in my life. I want him to do something in my family. I want him to do something in my church. Amen. When I pray. So what is it? What is it? that moves God when we pray. Let's see that scripture, James 5, 16 through 18. Let's look at this. Look what that says. Watch this. It says, confess your faults one to another. Let's pause right there just for a minute. I told him this in the first service. You have to have somebody you can trust to tell everything. You cannot, listen to me, beloved, you'll get yourself all messed up. You can't tell everybody everything. Huh? Because some people you tell, they're going to go say, okay, I'm going to go home and I'm going to go home and I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray for you. But some people you tell, they're going to spread your business all over town. They can't wait to get, they ain't going to even get to their car before they put it on Facebook. They're going to go right out there in the foyer and put it on Facebook, what you just said. And you said you had a bad cold, but when they put it on Facebook, they're going to say, you about to die. You cannot tell everybody everything. But you need somebody that you can trust. Amen, somebody. You need somebody that you can trust. Am I right about it? Amen. Amen. And it goes on to say, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. Here it is right here. Here's the kicker. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. Not just any man, a righteous man. You got to have a right relationship with God. See, you can't live any kind of way and expect you to get a prayer through to God. Huh? 
You can't serve the devil and ask God to answer your prayers. I know there ain't nobody in there like this. I'm just preaching, y'all. But you got to have a relationship with him. But that say a righteous man availeth much. Let's see that next scripture. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. He was a righteous man. He was just like me and you, but the only thing, he had a, rela a right relationship when he, when he prayed. So when he prayed, it w his prayer went up to heaven, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. You don't think that's some power? When the last time you made it rain? Amen. <laughs> Let's see that next one. It says, and he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. We can move some things, y'all. Somebody, I don't know about y'all, but I got some things that I need God to fix in my life. I know we come and we, we sit and we, we, we look the part and we act the part. But if we just be real, can we be real this morning? I got some things in my life that I need God to fix. I got some things in my family that I need God to fix. I need to get in touch with God. Am I right about it this morning? Y'all still with me? Y'all ain't checked out on me, have you? Let's go on to the text. At least I keep y'all too long. Here we go. This is the meat of this thing. I'm going to show you a man of God that had a right relationship with God. And I already told you that he has no favorites. You know, what he do for one, he'll do for the other. So what he done for this man of God, what he done for Elijah, he'll do for you. So if your prayers are not being answered, it's on you. It's not on God. Amen. Watch this. Let's go. Y'all ready? Verse number one. It says, in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. He was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Now that's some bad news. Y'all think that's some bad news? And that came from God. God said you're going to die. If Reverend Moore say you're going to die, you might live. But if God say you're going to die, you better call the family and you better call the folks in. Because it's over with. Amen, somebody. God said he was going to die. Am I right about it? He said you're going to die and not live. And, and, and he was already sick to death. It's like you laying on your sick bed. You don't know if you're going to make it. Then I show up and say, hey, you're going to die. That's what God said. That's not the kind of news you want to hear. Amen, somebody. But I'm going to show you how to tap into the power of heaven this morning. And remember, you can do just like this man of God. You can move some things. We can move some things. We hadn't even begun to tap into what God has for us. We ain't even touched the surface, y'all. You know what? This building ought to be packed this morning. It ought to be packed, but you know what happens? Over time, since people don't understand how to work the word, how to practice the word of God, they think, well, that word of God don't work. There's nothing wrong with the word. You never learn how to use it. It always works. God never changes. He's the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. You just hadn't learned how to use it. So they'll go home and say, well, I went to that church and uh, huh, I never, nothing ever did happen. Yeah, it was happening. You just didn't know how to make it work. Then I'm going to go to another church. It ain't happening over there. And then I just go home. Amen. It ought to be full. This morning, 
Because when you learn how to work the work, I got this situation Monday morning. But when I learn how to tap into the power of God and I see God move that situation, I see God fix that situation, I see God heal that body, that gets me excited. But if I pray and nothing happens, nothing happens. Why would you be excited and it ain't working for you? But I stopped by to tell you this morning, there's nothing wrong with God, and there's nothing wrong with the Word of God. So if it's not happening, it's on you. Am I right about it? Let's me, let me move on here. Verse number two, it says, after he, after he was sick and near death, and Isaiah showed up and dropped that bad news on him, told him God said, you're going to die and not live. Watch what he done. Then he turned his face Toward the wall. He turned around. Toward the wall. What, did that, what does that do when I turn my face to the wall? I'm shitting y'all out. No disrespect to y'all, because I love y'all. I'm just preaching y'all. Don't, don't y'all get mad at me. I mean, no disrespect. But every now and then, I got to turn my face to the wall, and I got to get with God. You can't help me in this situation. Some situations you'll find yourself in, you can't help me. I got to get with God. I got to shut everybody else out. I got to turn my phone off. I got to turn my TV off. And I got to go in this room and I got to get in my closet because I need God to move something in my life. Hmm? Sometimes you got to turn your face to the wall. You got to shut everybody else out. We got a lot of distractions in our lives now. Huh? Sometimes I got to shut it all down. Don't call me. Don't call me between 12 and 2. Don't call me. Don't come by here because I ain't going to open the door for you. Huh? Because I got to get with God. Sometimes we got to get with God, y'all. Amen, somebody. Somebody in the house like that this morning? Somebody need to get with God. Then he turned his, not only did he turn his face toward the wall, and he prayed to the Lord, saying, I got to go to God sometimes. I got to go directly to God. It's all right for the preachers to pray about for you. It's all right for other members to pray for you. It's all right for family members to pray for you. But every now and then, I got to go to God for myself. Huh? And I got to shut everybody and everything else out. Cut the computer off. Cut the phone off. Lock the door. Go in there and don't come out till you hear from God. He'll move some things in your life. I'm going to show it to you in the text right here. It's in the text. He did that. He prayed. And watch this. Watch his prayer. Verse number three, he says, Remember now. Oh, Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with the law of your heart and have done what was good in your sight. He said, Lord, I've walked before you. Lord, I've served you. See, when you, when you, when you got that kind of prayer there, Pastor Romeo, you don't mind going to God. Because you know I've been doing everything that God has asked me to do. So, and it gives you confidence. When you got your life lined up with God, when you're doing the will of God, it gives you confidence. When I fall down on my knees, when I get up, I say, he heaven has already heard my prayer. God is moving. He may not move today. He may not move tomorrow. But I can, I can, I can count it all joy because I know God going to do it. Amen, somebody. I know he's going to do it. He's going to do it in his own way, in his own time, but I know he's going to move. Good God Almighty. Hmm. Let me hurry on and get out of here, y'all. Let me hurry on and get out of here. He said, remember how I've lived before you with a law, in, walked with you in truth and with a law of your heart and has done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept. Bitterly. You know, he, he, he wept bitterly. And watch this. Verse number four. And it happened 
before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court, that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I wish I had a praying church in here this morning. I have heard your prayer. Huh? It's because of his lifestyle. It's because of how he lived before God. Before the man of God could get away. He turned his face to the wall and he prayed. And before the man of God could get, to, before he could get away, he said, go back in there and talk to him. I've already heard his prayer. That's the way I want God to move for me. I don't know about y'all. Y'all may not need nothing from heaven, but I need some things from heaven this morning. Good God Almighty. He said, go back in there and tell him. My, my, my. Go back in there. Go back in there and tell him. Not, not, not only, he says, I have heard your prayer, but the icing on the cake, he says, and I've seen your tears. I saw you crying in the midnight hours when everybody else thought you had it all together. God said, I saw you crying in the midnight hour. And I heard your prayer. Good God Almighty. That's, the, that's how I want to get in touch with God. It's possible. We got access to God. But we got to know how to tap into it. My, my, my. Not only have I heard your prayer, I've seen your tears. And watch what he's telling. Surely I will heal you. God said, I'm about to do it. I heard your prayer and I saw your tears. Now I'm about to do it. What you believe in God for this morning? Are you sold out to him? What you believe in him for this morning? I don't know. But I do know one thing. I know he's able. I know he's able. Mm. Good God Almighty, y'all. I get excited about this. He says, surely I will heal you. Watch this. On the third day, you should go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you from this city, from the land of the king of Ezra, and I will defend this city for my own name's sake. God said, I'm going to do it for my name's sake. I'm going to do it just because you belong to me. For my name's sake. See, you know what? Let me stop right here, and I'm about out of here, y'all. God wants to answer your prayer. Because if he answers your prayer, prayers, it encourages the unbeliever. Amen, somebody. How is the unbeliever going to be encouraged if God never does anything for you? He's waiting to answer your prayers. He's just waiting on you to get in the right place. I got to go now, y'all. I got to go. Verse number six says, And I will add 15 years, 15, and I will add to your days 15 years, and I will deliver this city from the hand of the king of Azariah, and I will defend this city for my own name's sake and for the sake of my servant David. Watch this. Seven, then we out of here. Then Isaiah says, Take a lump of figs. So they took and laid it on the ball, and he recovered. <laughs> access to heaven. We have access to heaven. We just got to learn how to tap into it, y'all. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen, somebody. See, Jesus Jesus said he died, and he rose with all power in his hand. He power in heaven and power on earth. He said, I rose. I got all the power in my hand. I, I, I got the keys. Well, whatever you stand in need of this morning, here's the keys. 
I just need you to access the keys to heaven. They're available to you. All you got to do is line up with my word. You need deliverance, it's in heaven. You need healing, it's in heaven. You need finances, it's in heaven. Your marriage needs fixed, it's in heaven. Your children need fixed, it's in heaven. Keys to heaven. Access to heaven. God bless you and keep you is my prayer.